Hi everyone, my name is Ginger Broderick and I'm the host of the Ginger New York TV show. Welcome to the show every Friday afternoon. It's Blast Off Fridays with Ginger New York. So thanks a lot for tuning in. We're here live every Friday. I have a great guest today. He's a guy from the neighborhood and he, we are Facebook friends and you know how much I love people who are artists and designers and performers. I called him up and asked him to be a guest on the show. His name is Raphael Colon and I want to welcome Raphael. Thank you so much. Thank you, Ginger. Thank so you wonderful me. to have you come in. Thank you. How was your commute here today? My commute here was great. I <laughs> only live six blocks away from here. Excellent. It's wonderful that, you know, it's a hot skip and a jump. Yeah, down it's the street. right close by. I'll come by and visit. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's a lot of fun. And, you know, you're a designer. Actually, you're a, a freelance self-taught designer. Yes. And uh, before you got all involved with that, you actually were in the, the military, the U.S. Marines. Yes, I was, uh, I was in you. the Marine Corps. Uh -huh. I was in Marine Corps for eight years. Wow. And um, yeah, I, I saw a lot of things, traveled yeah. a lot of places, uh -huh. and and it I, I actually learned a lot. It actually helped me grow. Uh -huh. It helped me get out of my neighborhood. Well, I was <laughs> just going to ask, what was the decision for you to join the military? Well, well, the decision was that I grew up in the South Bronx, yeah. and you know there were a lot of kids that were doing bad things, and it it was all up to me whether I wanted to be part of that crowd or wanted to mm -hmm. grow and evolve and be somebody else. Mm -hmm. So I decided I wanted to be somebody else. Good for and you. Even though that's the hardest road to choose, yes, it's better that way because you get to learn more yeah and that's what I did I went into 42nd Street I went to that little wow. kiosk oh, wow. in Times Square uh -huh. in Times Square I walked in uh, Army Navy and Air Force they were all out to lunch uh -huh. the Marine was the only one sitting oh at isn't the desk. that something because I was going to ask what made you decide you know well there's a lot of factors that made me decide uh -huh. he was the only one there eating his lunch and he also had the same last name as I did. Oh, so, isn't that something? So I figured, you know, it must be fate. Good for you. So I just told him, sign me up. I'm ready to go. Uh-huh. And you're originally from Puerto Rico. Yes. And then you moved here as a child. Yes, I moved to uh, New York when I was nine years old. Uh-huh. And we moved to the South Bronx. And boy, what a world of a difference because oh, my, my first language is Spanish, uh -huh. was Spanish. And so learn, trying to learn English was like playing charades. It was all oh. in the hands. And uh -huh. so uh -huh. I never stopped that. And now I understand that's a New York thing. <laughs> you know, we talk with the hands. Are you there Italian you there? <laughs> so it's not only Italian, but guess what? The Bronx had a lot of Italians. Uh -huh. So when I moved in, there were a lot of Italians. Uh -huh. So everything was charades and, you know, there's a square <laughs> drawer. You know, that's where my clothes are. And that's how things began. Uh -huh. And so that's what forged the kind of person that I, that I am. Good for you. You're taking the high road. You took the high road. I took the high road. Right. Yeah. And, and boot camp must have been so difficult. And You, you know, know what? I, boot camp wasn't as difficult. Of course, growing in the South, <laughs> the South Bronx, we see worse stuff. Oh, wow. But what was difficult is that I'm from the South Bronx. We really don't swim in the South Bronx. So okay. The most difficult thing was swimming. Right. Uh-huh. And um, we I'm, mostly lounge in the pool. Oh, okay. See, I'm a competitive swimmer, and I put a lot of time and effort into um, that sport. And it looks so easy, but it it's is not. It is difficult mm -hmm. to swim. Even great swimmers, uh, you know, undergo a lot of training and coaching. Still, even when they're, you know, Olympians. Absolutely. I mm -hmm. mean, so for me, swimming was very difficult. Yes. That was the uh -huh. hardest thing about boot camp for me. Okay. And but other than that, it was, it was. It was a learning experience. A lot I mean, of discipline too. A lot of discipline. Uh -huh. It was, it was one of those things where, you know, when you're there, you're like, why did I choose this for myself? Uh -huh. Why am I torturing myself? But then you learn, and uh -huh. you learn discipline, and you learn how to be, uh -huh. you know, a better person, and and then you grow from there, and yeah. it's up to you to grow from that, uh -huh. and that's what I did. I, I used it to grow and create myself mm -hmm. and eight years is a long time isn't it normally a four-year commitment yes four okay. and four so i, I oh, okay. signed up four and four okay I, good I, for you i went back uh -huh. <laughs> well, I don't where know. was your favorite place to travel while oh, you were in the marines oh egypt was the, isn't that was my favorite place mm -hmm. egypt was my favorite place norway was another favorite oh. spot it's because it's outside of the i mean number one egypt the pyramids mm -hmm. just when you're there it's it's Different like energy. it's another world mm -hmm. it's it's you know uh, our ancestors came from there. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's you know, you're walking, you know, where, where you read stories in the Bible and like, yeah. oh, wow, it's right here. Yeah, and it's very interesting. The people are very interesting, mm -hmm. amazing people. I got to meet a lot of locals that are fantastic. If you're in the military and if there's anything that you should do and you're away overseas, just talk to people mm -hmm. and people will love to talk about themselves and mm -hmm. love to talk about their culture and, and their the food, more you yeah. and food yeah. and the more you talk about a person's culture 
the more they warm up to you. And you know what? It makes things pleasant. Yeah. See, I grew up in the Midwest, and it was really great when we had people that came into town um, because it gave us a view of what the outside world is like. And, right. and that's how I got influenced to move to New York, actually. You know, I, I really enjoy the people that I met from the East Coast. I kind of took the high road myself. I cried every day for a year. Oh, I bet. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, but I, I, I got, you know, I adapted, you know, and, um, and, and I've enjoyed really meeting people from all over the world and tasting foods from right. all different countries and such. And that's the beauty of New York and, li and being raised in New York is that there's so many cultures here yeah. that no matter where you go, you'll always come across someone that you've come across in New York. Oh, isn't that interesting? Nowhere, uh -huh. anywhere in the world. Yeah. So eventually you will be able to adapt to a person and how okay. they talk and, and how they they express themselves and you can understand it easier yeah and so after your military service you came back to new york right mm -hmm. i was i was in new york already uh here with the reserves the last four years was reserves oh, okay. and uh i was already in new york and i got married had my daughter um but i was always dabbling in art here and there and s my daughter saw something in me that i, I didn't see mm-hmm and so what happened is I then became a fitness trainer. Mm -hmm. And as a fitness trainer, I've been doing it now 15 years. And I've met so many amazing people mm -hmm. as a fitness trainer, not, not only clients, but also um, members. Mm -hmm. And because of it, that's also helped me grow. As what do you person. mean by members? I'm sorry. Members of the gym. Members, oh, okay. members mm -hmm. who go to the okay. gym to work out mm -hmm. and you know you when you're you're in your downtime you have you can talk to people okay. and, and it's all up, up to you how you talk to people. You know if you're in, uh, introverted and you don't talk to anybody, mm -hmm. you know, nobody's going to talk to you. Mm -hmm. But people want to ask you questions. Mm -hmm. And when they ask you questions about fitness, then you ask them questions about themselves mm -hmm. and then you learn about people. And you develop a rapport with you, people. A rapport and, and a network. Yeah. And mm -hmm. a network of connections and and boy, I, I didn't even know I had so many connections till I actually started needing the connections. Mm -hmm. and, and it's all about, hey, so what do you do? Oh, wow, that's amazing. Guess what? I'm doing this. That's wonderful. And this, that's how it rolls. And then cool. you've, uh, um, you're still a fitness trainer. Yes, and then yes. you developed into a designer. Yes, then I developed into a first a sneaker artist. Uh -huh. um, that began with my daughter. Uh -huh. My daughter gave me the idea. Her name's Erin, uh -huh. and she, she gave that me That sounds the, Irish. Yes. Uh -huh. Actually, on my way to Egypt, we stopped at Shannon Airport, Ireland, oh, okay. and I saw the name Erin yeah, everywhere. Yeah. So Erin means, you know, it's the old name of, of Ireland. Uh -huh. So I fell in love with the name, uh -huh. and I said, if ever I have a daughter, I'll call her Erin. And I'm Irish, so, you know. Yeah, okay, all right. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I eat my look at germs every morning. <laughs> um, so my daughter... Um, gave me saw a sneaker with a flower on it uh -huh. on a converse and she goes oh can i can i have something like that and i go you know what i think i could do something like that mm -hmm. she goes really you know what i bet you can't so she dared me oh, isn't and it something? was all a dare and so what happened i i bought her a pair of sneakers i drew this flower on it she loved it two weeks later she goes you know dad that was really good but can you draw this and oh, she kept interesting? she kept pushing me. And how old was she at this time? Ten years old. Oh, isn't that interesting? And, and she kept pushing me on and egging me on to try different things and get bigger and better at it. Uh -huh. And so eventually, I became addicted to it. And and oh. then as people, and you're a freelance drawer too. And I'm too. freelance. So okay. so what I do is I'll look at a photograph or I oh, look okay. at a picture and and I'll just copy it. Uh -huh. You know, just look up and copy, uh -huh. just look up and well, copy. Well, that's how a lot of designers yeah. work. You know, I've seen what they've done. or They take inspirations and they'll adapt it into their own, you know, artistic design. Exactly. You know? mm -hmm. And, you know, and at first, <laughs> I, I didn't think I could do it, you know, just like anybody else. You'll doubt yourself. And even now, I still, I still doubt myself mm -hmm. because that's how you get, that's how you become careful at what you're doing. Okay. Mm -hmm. You know, so I started with sneakers and then, at the gym, someone, uh, a friend, actually had um, asked me for a pair of sneakers. And I said, yeah, sure, no problem. Because at the time, I was actually giving away sneakers wow. only because I wanted my name uh -huh. out there. I wanted people to know who I was. And your design name is Brolic Designs? Brolic Designs, uh -huh. yes. Uh -huh. And I wanted people to know who I was. And I wanted not just to be like every other sneaker artist. I wanted to be that that guy that could draw the Mona Lisa on your sneaker. <laughs> I could draw the 16 Chapel on the sneaker. Uh -huh. 
And so that was my goal, to become that type of artist. Mm -hmm. And so I would give sneakers away. I would go on, on, on websites and go, hey, I'll make you a pair of sneakers. Where are you from? And I would mail it to them. Oh, wow. You know, everything out of my own pocket. And so this, this one friend of mine asked me for a pair of sneakers, and she took the sneakers to Nickelodeon to the marketing director of Nickelodeon and they really liked it so much they called me three weeks later and I, I made them some sneakers some sample sneakers and then from there I gravitated to MTV and then from there I got a marketing company that reached out to me and then I was able to make sneakers for Yahoo Nintendo the NBA and it and, and that actually helped mm -hmm. me grow mm -hmm. and then a good friend of mine and what's the process of time over over this is this like a this year is, no uh, this that process was a year. Mm -hmm. So that first year, I was just banging out sneakers like a factory. <laughs> I, I mean, every day I was, if I had extra money, I'd buy a sneaker. Mm -hmm. Buy extra oh, money, I'd buy an extra pair. Mm -hmm. And I would give them away to kids, to, to adults, Exciting. to this, to that. And a friend of mine in California who connected with me through Twitter actually connected me to an actor out in California, Jamie Kennedy. And Jamie Kennedy, he's a he's a comedian, mm -hmm. and he he was just he just loved my artwork that um, he purchased uh, two or three pairs of sneakers from me, mm -hmm. and then I made him a pair of sneakers just for for one of his shows that he did, and from there was that I knew that something mm -hmm. there was something here, mm -hmm. there was something going on that I don't know that wow. other people do. MTA uh, the what M um, MTV and the NBA you said what? Yeah. yeah that's pretty serious you know. Yeah, but you know, <clears throat> you can't think of that. Okay. Because then what happens is. Uh, I guess it gets to your head and then you think oh yeah I'm better than you I'm better than that person and you stop growing and then mm -hmm. you stop growing you mm -hmm. stop evolving mm -hmm. what you want to do is you just want to keep going you're, you're that runaway train that you just keep going and you don't stop because you want to continuously evolve and you don't want your head exploding where it can't fit through a door you know mm -hmm. and so once I found that there's something there I decided to evolve and get better and then I started teaching myself Mm -hmm. more stuff I started buying I, I wanted to buy books on art but I, I figured out that I already had art books mm -hmm. I, I had purchased art books throughout my life oh isn't that interesting without mm -hmm. actually knowing what I why I was collecting it for mm -hmm. oh isn't that interesting and so when I looked through my box I had all these art books and then I just started Good teaching myself I taught myself some photorealism and then I actually started drawing real faces on sneakers and then uh, as you progress with the sneakers, then it went into the skateboards, and you've yes. got some examples for yes, us. Yes, yes. Can we, can we see what sure. you're doing so you know, sure. the people the, at home can these skateboards are, are get the, an idea of your at least artwork? The first three I'm going to show you is this skateboard here is for an exhibition that we're going to be talking about, which uh -huh. is of suicides in the military. Uh -huh. And now how, how the process begins, it starts in pencil. Mm -hmm. As you can see down here, it's still in pencil in mm -hmm. some areas. And then what I do is I use a wood burning tool. Mm -hmm. Okay, that wood burning tool, I go over that same exact drawing so that the image is embedded mm -hmm. in the skateboard. Okay. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's pretty much what it looks like and some parts are already wood burned. Uh -huh. And then after that, okay, this is what it looks like with some color in it. Oh, isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. Now there's still wood burned down here but now you see the process of how it was completely wood burned mm -hmm. and now with actual color. Well, I follow you on Facebook and you'll you'll show things, you know, the right. process or I've just finished the sketching. Right. But uh, so it's the drawing and then the wood burning and then and you then actually the fill in. And then the actual coloring mm -hmm. and then after that it's more detail work. Like this one here, this is the one that I, I'm going to be showcasing is oh, La Pieta. Oh, and so what I did was I I, well, isn't this interesting? I saw the... What's the idea behind this design? Well, it's, it's a mother and, and her oh, military child okay. and how the, the soldier has either committed suicide or has post-traumatic stress disorder, oh. and it's her overlooking him. Oh. And, and so this was really close to heart, and when I saw the, the statue, I decided, you know what, that would be great to put on a skateboard. And actually, my, my good friend and the one who's going to be working with me on this exhibition, Miss mm -hmm. um, Lenore Grossman, she was the one that came up with the idea. Oh, isn't and it And I did the work. Mm -hmm. Very good. And so, yeah, so it's stuff like this that, um, that's the process that oh, I do. Oh, and there's one on the other side, yes. too. Yes. And that's something? just her face. 
Oh wow! And you hang these up on a wall, right? Because I was looking, I was looking for wheels for skateboarding. Absolutely, no, no. These <laughs> too actually, expensive for that, right? Actually, yeah. You don't want to. You don't want to spend so much money on a piece of art uh -huh. that's going to grow in value and then uh -huh. devalue it yes. by you know yeah. riding around the street. Uh -huh. Now I can create. And art. what's the price range on something like this? Well, if it's if it's a custom skateboard that's going to be for an individual, yes. it's between 200 to 300. Yes. But if it's something where a foundation is going to raise money through a silent auction, through a or, silent something? auction mm -hmm. or something, mm -hmm. it's from 300 and up. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. And that's the. This is a great example of hey, I can't find a job. I'm creating a job <laughs> for myself. Exactly. Wonderful. And what else do you have okay, over well, there? Okay, well, these mm -hmm. are just my own pieces. Uh huh. And this here. Oh, isn't that? Look at that. Wow. And that's Look at that. And at times, I will create is that artwork. The, uh -huh, it's a dragon. Uh -huh. This is the fire dragon. Uh -huh. And on the other side is the water dragon. Oh, isn't that something? So at, sometimes I, I'll create two pieces on either side. Wow. You know, in case you get bored with one, you just flip oh, it around isn't that interesting. and you have another. Well, that's a great idea. Yeah. Good for you. And I have this one here. This is my underwater theme. I had was I had this whole big theme last year. Uh huh. Oh, look at that! Wow, it's a like a diver. Oh, yeah, it's, it's a, a deep sea diver, and oh, you have wow. a crab, and you have an octopus, all oh, isn't that tentacles something? around. And then I did a little wood burn on the other side. Oh, isn't that something? And of course, I sign it. Uh huh. Brolic designs. Uh -huh, yeah. And you autograph it. Mm -hmm. And I number it. And you number them. That was yeah. interesting. Do you have you, so they're each a limited edition or do each you? one is limited edition? Oh. I would never recreate the same skateboard. Oh, okay. And actually, I can't. It's actually a lot of work. Uh -huh. And this is one of my favorites. Oh my geisha. wow! Look at that. Yeah, she's pretty amazing. Mm -hmm. And so what I like I said, everyone it's is custom made. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can I will not recreate this at all. Which is mm -hmm. why you know, hopefully as as the popularity and the skateboards become, mm -hmm. you know, uh, bigger, they grow in value. Mm -hmm. And the more in value that they are, the more, you know, valuable they are. Now, who do you sell these to? Is it private individuals or? Private individuals, mm -hmm. mostly. Mm -hmm. It's it's a lot of custom work. It's it, A lot of it is word of mouth. Uh-huh. Oh, it's an unusual internet. type of gift, too. Yes, and mm -hmm. it's a great gift, especially mm -hmm. to someone who's either a skateboard artist or just a lover of art. Uh-huh. And what they ask me is stuff that they like. Uh -huh. Listen, I like uh, okay. Iron Maiden or, uh -huh. or I like, you know, Super monkeys heroes. flying yeah. you know, <laughs> Superman. Like, or Superman. I'm like, OK, great. I'll draw that. And then I'll, I'll do a little rough sketch and I'll draw it on the skateboard mm -hmm. and I'll send them a picture and say, what do you think? Do you think this is what you're looking for? And they'll give me, you know, oh, can you change this? Can you change that? I'll do that. And once it's once we both agreed that that's what you want, mm -hmm. then I would burn it. Mm -hmm. And once it's wood burned, we can't there change it. There you go. And then I paint it, sign it, number it, ship it out. So you um, are former from the military, right? Yeah. So you are doing working on some projects too, yes. right? Um, incorporating this into some foundations for the military. Can you explain something about that? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, right now, I am currently working on a project which is we're hoping to have an exhibition for suicides in the military mm -hmm. and uh, this is for a lot of soldiers who are coming home yes. and a lot of veterans who are committing suicide oh. and have post-traumatic stress disorder wow. uh, right now uh, suicide is the number one cause of death in the military wow. and um, I wanted to raise awareness about this mm -hmm. and throughout throughout the years it has been there has been some awareness but just not enough mm -hmm. And well, I think after the shooting with Newton, um, there's going to be a focus oh, on mental, absolute. mental health, mental health and gun control. Yeah. And but th that's what's happening. All, all these things, all these mental health issues are really going to come out. Mm -hmm. And especially for our veterans who really, really need uh, um, psychological treatment. They need help. They and, and our kids who are coming home and and for the families as well, because the families don't know how, how to, to deal, deal with, with that. Mm -hmm. And so. My friend uh, and the, the woman who's working with me on, on this exhibition, Miss Lenore Grossman, she really um, was the one who came up with the idea. Mm -hmm. And she goes, okay, Raphael, this is the idea. Can we, what can you do? Uh -huh. I'm like, I don't know what I can do, uh -huh. but I'll create as many pieces of artwork as we can. And you're also working with um, Mr. Morgenthau? Well, how that happened was... Tell us about that. Yes, Mr. Robert Morgenthau. Um, he is the former New York uh, City um, 
district attorney, uh -huh. and he wrote an, a great article in the Wall Street Journal about post-traumatic stress disorder. Uh -huh. And that really took me and Lenore Grossman to heart. And it was something that we had just started to do. Okay, I was just wondering if that article maybe have influenced what you're no, doing. No, we had already oh, begun. Isn't that and, interesting? And it just came in that that same oh, yeah. time when mm -hmm. I had just created 10 pieces of skate. Oh, isn't that of interesting? Art. How much time does it take to create one of these pieces? Uh, it takes about six to eight hours, depending okay. on what the individual wants. Okay. The hardest part is really is the concept, mm -hmm. that, <laughs> which mm -hmm. takes a long time to try to figure out what to put on the board. Okay. It's the concept. And so we decided that we needed to write him a letter. Okay. And uh, Ms. Lenore Grossman, she wrote a phenomenal letter to, to Mr. Robert Morgenthau. And a few weeks later, he wrote back. Wow. And we didn't think he was going to write back. Right. But this is something that we found out that's very close to his heart. Interesting. Because he, he was in the Navy in, uh, in World War II, and, and he actually saved a lot of his buddies. And he has seen a lot of post-traumatic stress disorder since then. I see. And so, so it isn't necessarily when the servicemen come back. It could show up maybe 10 or 20 years later? Exactly. Wow. Yeah, there, there's acute, wow. there, there's, there's different types of post-traumatic stress disorder. It could happen even before you actually go to war or go overseas. It could be already in your body from the stress that's, that's created. So it's, it could be uh, before, after, during, wow. and years later. And it's not necessarily because someone's injured, it's just because of maybe exposure they exposure had to different stress oh, okay. a, a different environment uh -huh. um, being away from the family being away from family and yeah. and all that and fear mm -hmm. and so a lot of these I asked a yes. football player one time do you have fear and they said of course we do so you know I was surprised and because I think of a soldier as being strong too but I guess you deal mm. well how do you deal with that fear well you have to have fear I mean, so you can be aware of what's going on. I see. If you have no fear, oh, then you're I just going to charge in, I see. you know, and you're going to, you're not going to have a good time. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. what you do is you, you go in and, and that fear is, that is what makes you think mm -hmm. and makes you look where you're not usually used to looking uh -huh. and that's where you see things better and clearer mm -hmm. you have to have fear i'm sure like when you were doing your competitive uh, swimming right you had that fear of what if i don't make it to that wall <laughs> right if i get you a know, jump in what there. if you know what i if, blow it you know if, right you we have false it? starts you know what if you catch a cramp you know <laughs> yeah so you yeah. have that fear yeah. bathing suit malfunctions <laughs> right it happens exactly goggles that that's a big issue and so what you yeah. want to do is you want to you want to have that fear so that you can I overcome see. it. Mm -hmm. You can't just not have it because then you, you know, uh -huh. you won't. You'll just go in um, crazy. So, Robert. So we met Mr. Robert Morgan's talk oh, le uh, last last month. He was he was very very kind to us and he was very interested. And so now he's backing us and he's going to hopefully help us find a space for our Suicide in the Military exhibition. Oh, isn't that interesting? Yeah, so, Good for so this you. is really something that's going to be not only close to his heart, but close to my heart. Wonderful. And, and will this be a fundraising event? Yes, or it, will more, be, okay. it will be a fundraising event. It's, we, oh, go ahead. Mm -hmm. We're going to try to raise money uh, for uh, the Wounded Warrior Project, okay. mm -hmm. um, which helps a lot of veterans sure. with post-traumatic stress disorder, and also the uh, AFSP, American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. I see. They help a lot of people, I mm -hmm. mean, in general, who are dealing with uh, suicide mm -hmm. and, and, and what comes with that. Mm -hmm. So I, I really wanted to... So I would say most of the proceeds are going to these two foundations mm -hmm. and it's only the beginning it's only it's awareness if mm -hmm. you can have one person aware mm -hmm. that and that person can help someone mm -hmm. not commit suicide yeah. or that person can help someone tell someone about yeah. something they think that's happening it seems to be more prevalent or there's more awareness about it because a lot of teenagers are committing suicide correct i mean you know look at the some of the people are they're, they're pushers you know that uh, push people in front of trains i mean right. those are just i mean it's just it seems like it's developing more and more you have a lot of financial depression people don't have right. any hope you know and uh you know people need to seek counseling and and, and to important. know, yeah, to know that you can get past a very difficult time in your life, that you're not always stuck there. Exactly, and and, and we, and hopefully the awareness is not just for our regular people; it's also for the families. Yes. When these soldiers come home, 
Uh, or, or, or many of them are physically injured or, or physically dismembered. Injured. You know, I've seen that before. Right. And yeah. just because they're not physically injured doesn't mean that they're not injured. Oh, you know, okay. you, know you understand? Mm -hmm, uh, mm -hmm. um, uh, and that, that's a problem that's going on where a lot of these soldiers come home, but just because they don't have a, an arm missing or a leg missing, that they're okay. Mm -hmm. And most times they're not okay. Mm -hmm. There's always something going on in, in the brain that is you can't see. Mm -hmm. And it's that thing that we can't see that we want to deal with. Mm -hmm. And we want to help them. And we mm -hmm. want to, at least, if we can help one, that one can help another. And, that, and those two idea. can help two. And those four can help eight. And, well, that's, and that's how it, it moves on. We had a guest last week whose motto is not only do good, but make good things happen. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Yeah. And that's what you want to do. You want to make things happen by, by really, it's sort of like, it's like spreading the disease yeah. of, you know, goodness, you know. Yeah. Like, and it's great to show that it's done through the, the creative arts, too. Absolutely. Yeah. And you know what? And, and it all, hopefully it inspires other artists to, yes. to do the same thing. Yeah. Raise awareness for a cause that you believe in. Yes. And believe it or not, most people will respond po in a positive way. So that's what you want. You want that positive feedback. And when you get it, you just work harder when you do your artwork. Do you know that we're down to our last minute here of the oh, show? Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> we're just talking we're away. We're just chatting <laughs> away. <laughs> it's really great, everything that you're doing. I mean, it's wonderful to watch a person's process in life, too, by joining the military, you know, getting the discipline, being a trainer, becoming an artist, and doing a lot of great things, you know, from, you know, the roots, too, that you've had. And are there, are there any parting words, any words of wisdom that you have, you know, for our... It, it, the only words of wisdom is, you know, if you believe in something, just do it. For it. Just don't think about it. If you think about it, you'll never do it. If you actually do it, Take one you step. Get, you're mm -hmm. going to see it. Uh, like, like that old proverb, you know, with one step, yep. it begins your journey. That's wonderful. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. Wasn't it a great um, afternoon talking with artist Rafael Colon? He's from the neighborhood here in East New York, and I think it's just really great to, to see a, a person's lifestyle, all the different disciplines and, you know, travels that he's had, and check him out on his website. Tell us about where we can find you. You can find me at www.brolicdesigns.com. Uh -huh. Wonderful. Thank you, everyone. To keep joining in every Friday afternoon, 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Always a great guest, always going to learn something and be entertained. Thank you so much. Thank you, Jenga. Thank you very much for your time Thanks today. For having me. Thank you. Good night, everybody. We'll see you next week. Thank you.